Welcome to Arts Roll Call, a podcast showcasing artists and arts organizations, highlighting the role of the arts today in Greater Lansing. I'm Robin Miner Swartz. I'm an editor, communications consultant, and lifelong arts advocate. And today I'm talking with Alice Brinkman and Melissa Keeley. Alice is the co-founder, excuse me, Alice is the founder and current executive director of Reach Studio Arts Center. Alice grew up in East Lansing and has been a fiber artist and teaching artist for more than 40 years. In 2003, she brought her dream of a neighborhood art space to life, opening Reach in Rio Town. In 2013, she began a seven-year, $1.3 million development of the facility, transforming it from a one-studio classroom to a block-long connection of redeveloped buildings with seven studio classrooms. Since 2019, Alice has served on the City of Lansing Arts and Culture Commission, and in March of 2024, Alice will officially retire from the helm at Reach. And Melissa is Reach's incoming executive director, working the job half-time now alongside Alice, and beginning this fall, they will serve as co-directors until Alice's retirement. Melissa comes to us from New Jersey and has spent the past eight years as director of development at Lansing Christian School. She is also a professional photographer and visual artist who is passionate about reducing barriers for people in our community to make, exhibit, and experience art. Alice and Melissa, welcome to Arts Roll Call. So good to have you here today. Thank you, Robin, for having us. Well, it's exciting to talk with both of you about this milestone in the history of Reach Studio Art Center and in both of your careers. Alice, let's start at the top. When did you decide you were ready for this change? I was trying to put some year dates on this. We've, we've been planning as a board, you know, for, for a while, knowing that um, I was getting up there in age and getting close to... <laughs> <laughs> to sort of that typical 65-year-old retirement age. And um, so we've been planning for it for a few years. But I think maybe more in earnest, uh, 2021 is when I think I knew, well, it's time to, to really start in earnest um, that process of succeeding out and um, finding finding the new person and so I would say that would that was when it started well when you started dreaming of reach all those years ago what was your early vision for the space and did it initially look the way you had pictured well uh, my my original vision hasn't really changed a whole lot except that it's so much huger than what I ever dreamed it would be. <laughs> Uh, because I think uh, we're we're actually sitting right now in the in the room where Reach started, and uh, I back then that was at the end of two thousand three. Really visualized Reach as a, a you know having a space to um, bring youth from the neighborhood in to do art with. And um, just as simple as that, really. And um, so it, we continue to do that, but it's obviously expanded far beyond just just the neighborhood. But still, that that's my heart, you know. To um, I, I purposefully located reach here. Um, it's in the middle of of three. Uh, Lansing city neighborhoods and um, thought that this would be an accessible and visible spot um, to, to welcome, especially youth, to come in and, and do art. What did you learn in those first few years? What were, what were some things that surprised you when you opened your doors? Hmm. What were some things that surprised me well of course i i had you know a, just a little bit of business knowledge just from running my own dressmaking business for a while but um this was the first time i'd really jumped into a nonprofit business and so there was a lot to learn for that you know definitely um i think one of the things uh, that was necessary was to have both right and left brain capability. <laughs> and, 
And thankfully, I, I think that I do have both of those. <laughs> And so that uh, I think that made it easier for me to um, to be on that that really steep learning curve at the beginning of figuring out what what works for a nonprofit and what works for an arts nonprofit. And so. One of the great things about our region, I think, is the support system that exists among all the arts and culture nonprofits. And a lot of that runs through the center of the Arts Council of Greater Lansing. Can you talk about how the Arts Council's Young Creatives Programming supported your work at REACH? And when did you first connect with them? Yeah, uh, I can actually talk beyond the Young Creatives because I'm, I'm trying to think uh, some of the first grants that uh, or funding help that I received from the Arts Council, I think was be actually before the Young Creatives Program started. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, uh, actually the, um, the first major help that I received from the Arts Council um, was the first grant that we uh, applied for way back, it must've been 2004, um, and I think it was before we had received our 501c3 designation. Um, so we, we needed a fiduciary um, to in order to get the grant. And it was a, I'm, I'm going to not remember the, the long name of the funder, but it was kind of the precursor to Michigan, Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, and then there was a, there were all these MCA <laughs> different organizations back then. A lot of acronyms. <laughs> yeah, a lot of acronyms. <laughs> Having to do with, you know, a, a statewide organization that was funding community art projects. And um, so we applied for that, and the Arts Council served as our fiduciary for that. And um, also uh, provided a lot of, you know, assistance in writing the grant and um, carrying carrying it through from the time we asked for the grant into, um, you know, even managing the the project after that. So so that was awesome. So that was really the the first conne first connection with the. Um, with the Arts Council um, once once I started REACH. And, and then, you know, it was just natural from there on after, whenever there was a grant program that the um, Arts Council um, had or was monitoring, um, we'd hear about it and we'd, of course, apply. And so I, Young Creatives, you know, has been supporting our um, neighborhood art camp and I think sometimes our summer camp scholarships um, for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of grants, let's talk about the 2013 physical expansion of the organization and all the updates. You're talking about sitting in your original space, but yes. you are now on, on a block. How was all of this realized? Yeah, so we actually started that whole process, I think in uh, 2010, um we were just we were starting to really burst at the seams in this one small room and which is where we were doing all of our programming including clay people who work with clay understand understand the that when i say you know clay we even had clay in here um yeah, we were bursting at the seams, and it was like we've we 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 have got to start looking for something. Um, so I I believe we uh, applied in 2011 for an impact grant uh, from the Community Foundation. I think that their impact grant program was fairly new at that time. It might have been it like was. only the second year that they were doing that and um, we thought it would be a good fit um, either for finding a larger space to lease for a, for a time 
to kind of get our bearings and um, or you know possibly look for something that we could purchase. And so that started kind of like a three year, <laughs> I think a three year search, two or three year search for places. I don't, I think I'm gonna make a, a journal book of all the like uh, spaces that we looked at and that I drew out, you know, okay, yep. this is where this studio space would go. This is where this studio space would go. <laughs> We, we went through a lot of different places and we were searching for something that would still be in Lansing and preferably as close to Rio Town as poss possible since we had developed a presence here and uh, didn't want to go too far away. Um, so anyway, that, that can become a really long story, but long story short, we got to a point where we, we almost had a place and it just didn't seem like it was going anywhere. And so we decided, you know what, well, we, we have to come up with a plan B because Community Foundation had been very gracious about extending our grant deadline uh, for a couple of years. And it's like, we've, we've got to find something and, you know, get this process going. So we ended up talking with the owner of the building that we were renting, which is this this building that this space is in, we knew, you know, that he would have been happy to sell us all of the buildings adjacent to this space, but just wasn't, we, we just weren't sure that there was, there was no parking, mm -hmm. there was no green space, it would just be a bunch of buildings. And so it was like, well, I'm not sure that that's a good idea. But, you know, when we got to this point where it was, need to come up with a plan B, we talked to the owner and we toured through the, the buildings that were pretty in pretty bad shape uh, on surface, but uh, the builders and architect assured us that there's some good stock here to work with. And there was so much space mm -hmm. that uh, we were able to decide to demolish one of the oldest and worst shape buildings and reclaim that space for courtyard for some green space and um, the the facility or the property included a house uh, on the lot on smith street and so we decided well we don't really want to be landlords of a rental house so that space would be good for a parking lot mm -hmm. so we got we had those two main issues solved and that's you know and, and they sold us the uh, whole property for the same amount as the impact grant. So it felt like a message. This, this is you it. belong here. This is where we belong. <laughs> yep. So how does the reach of today align with what you dreamed of at the beginning? Oh, well, I think it's, well, it's much larger, of course. <laughs> There's a lot more going on. I mean, the reach of the beginning, I was doing a lot more of the teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just me and maybe an AmeriCorps Vista for mm -hmm. a while, two of us, and then an occasional teaching artist or clay person that would help out. Um, and now, you know, we, we need staff to help manage and recruit teaching artists for all of the different programs we're doing and um you know and the and the spread is further so we're you know we have people coming in from all over the greater lansing area um, for camps and classes and um so yeah well as you look toward march what's next for you what's next well i'm really um, I think I really got the retirement bug when about a year and a half ago, my husband retired mm. <laughs> and he's, he's been off. We have six grandsons and uh, they're all fairly young still. And he's been, you know, traveling and off doing fun adventures with them, taking them to, you know, uh, national parks and 
Well, I've stayed home, <laughs> continue working, and uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to spending some more time with family and uh, having some freedom to do that. I'm also looking forward to. I keep telling people, I'm not I'm not leaving Reach completely unless, of course, Melissa kicks me out. You know, <laughs> <I> don't come. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to do things at reach that I love to do, mm -hmm. um, you know, to maybe teach some workshops, get back into doing some more teaching again and, mm -hmm. um, you know, helping out with some programs that are close to my heart. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, Melissa, how does it feel to step into a role with such a long established <laughs> and well-loved organization? I'll, Humbling. I mean, I think that's the best way to describe it. It's um, at times maybe a little overwhelming, but it's really exciting. And I, I'm just really humbled that I get to kind of live out Alice's vision for the next season here at Reach. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Did you have any experience with Reach in your time as an artist in Lansing? Actually, less so as an artist, more as a mom. So oh. two of my kiddos came and did the TOTS class. Um, when before they were school age, so I was here um, frequently as a parent attending classes. Oh, nice! So, what drew you to apply for the executive director position? Um, well, my background is in the visual arts, and my my graduate work was in arts administration. And I um, worked as a as a um, wedding and portrait photographer for quite some time, and then went into development, which I had done kind of in the art sector. Um, when we were living in Ohio, and I was eager to get back to the art sector. Um, and Reach is kind of an amazing place. I mean, everything Alice described, it's it's a remarkable place in our community. And um, knowing that, that there was an opening here, and um, I think I was excited about taking on some of the challenges of an executive director position um, during COVID, I think like most people, I had to lean in in new areas and realize that a lot of the areas I leaned into and really enjoyed aligned well with an executive director position. So I was excited to, to pursue that next step in my career. Well, and I would imagine having a development background is a big plus stepping into an arts nonprofit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in the introduction, I touched on your passion for making the arts accessible to everyone, which really aligns with exactly what REACH has been doing from the beginning. So, Melissa, can you talk a little bit about your vision for accessibility in the arts in our region in general and at REACH? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of different things to talk about when you talk about accessibility. I think the arts, um, just by the nature of, of what they are, tend to have a lot of barriers around them. People are intimidated by the arts. They um, maybe don't feel like they have access to spaces or the training they need to be artists. And I think that that there's just a mystique around the arts that really at times um, stop people from engaging, engaging in them. And that's at all levels. Um, but I think what makes REACH really unique is that it's able to touch on a lot of different areas to kind of reduce those barriers and to make accessibility kind of broader. And, and that really is in the full spectrum of, of when we talk about accessibility, about working with kids who um, maybe are at risk, who um, may not financially be able to afford um, programming that is above and beyond what's happening in the schools. Um, it's you know young artists who are looking for opportunities to um, exhibit or to learn how to be practicing artists. And it's um, working with individuals who have different ability levels who um, like the Accessibility Arts Program um, that we did in collaboration with the Lansing Art Gallery, thinking about how to um, make programming accessible for all different ability levels. And then, um, you know, giving access to like MASH, the My Art Studio space for practicing artists who are looking for community. So it's really about reducing barriers at all levels of an artist's kind of training and career. And and that kind of aligns with my passion area, which is, you know, to be a lifelong artist means meeting artists at different places throughout their lives. And that's um, a really remarkable thing about REACH. That's, that's so great. 
Well, you're you're both going through a whole lot of change and growth right now, and you're working through a lot of it together, kind of side by side. I'm curious what the process has been like for each of you, and I'll whoever would like that, both of you. Well, I think uh, one of the, I think one of the the biggest challenges uh, for us has been uh, we we're, we're we've got two fairly important staff positions that we we still need to fill and we um so our operations manager um moved on to to grad school um a couple weeks ago and um and then we've been you know i put off looking for a program director um because at the point where I was getting close to um, thinking about finding, you know, the next executive director. It's like I don't want to get be the one finding by myself all these new people and then hand it <laughs> hand over to Melissa or the new executive director. You know, okay, here here's your team. Yeah. So um, so it was important to to start. Um, you know, the board and I felt it was important to start by finding, you know, the, the next executive director first and get Melissa um, kind of started onboarding, you know, and then work together on finding um, the rest of the team. And so that that's, I think, made onboarding Melissa challenging. I think we would both agree with that because, you know, we're, we're trying to find other people at the same time as yeah. <laughs> Melissa, as me passing, you know, all this, you know, years and years and years of information on to Melissa. Mm -hmm. And so she can feel um, ready and comfortable to uh, taking over. So, so yeah, I, I'd say that's been the greatest challenge mm -hmm. is trying to, you know, divide our, <laughs> attention between onboarding you know directly onboarding melissa and and also trying to recruit new staff members as well mm -hmm. at times it's like drinking from a fire hose for sure because yes. there's so much <laughs> history and and so many aspects to what reach does but also you know it's also as you've noted a significant facility mm -hmm. so there's both sides of that and I think the one silver lining of doing the hiring is, is not only being able to um, find a team that's going to work really well together, but it's it's provided an opportunity for me to get to know some of the positions really well, um, kind of as we're navigating what what isn't my role, what is going to be the role of somebody else, and how are we looking to hire for those positions. So I'm learning a lot very quickly, which is which is great. Well, it sounds like this whole process is incredibly intentional. So that has to be really, really helpful. Absolutely. And Alice is, I think, very intentional about everything she does, as you can see from, from, from Reach, but that's been a, a wonderful part of the process is working together and kind of seeing um, it laid out in a way that gives me hopefully the, the best foot forward moving into 2024 and um, but also allows you know a lot of continuity for what Alice built here for for the next season. It's not as Alice says she's not going anywhere. We don't want her to go anywhere. So <laughs> I'm glad for that overlap that we can make sure that um, mm -hmm. that vision continues. That's great. Well, I, I, I'd love to hand the conversation over to both of you for a moment. What do either of you want to share, either about reach or about each other, and and, and why this has been such a good process? Well, I can mentioned that I think we, we had a similar uh, similar experience where we um, share with each other, you know, each day, I, w I wish it could be every day right now, but I'm, I'm trying to be patient. That's going to happen in, in September. <laughs> but uh, I, I find that, you know, after I've spent a day with Melissa, such as today, you know, I go home and tell my husband that 
you know, oh, I just, I feel really good. I feel so good about Melissa, you know, the, she has the right questions. She's got the right eye for things, you know, we're, we're right now kind of working on the, the bookkeeping piece, you know, and it's like, that's, that's kind of a scary. The non-creative uh, side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, okay, like how, how are we going to go through all of these like detailed ways of specific to reach of, you know, downloading the data, finding the, you know, the an anomalies, you know, and anyway, but you know, she's, I, I just, each time I'm with her, it's, uh, I, I get this confirmation that this is the, this was the right thing. So it feels amazing. <laughs> That's got to be great to hear. Yeah, it is great to hear. And, and I've had the same thing where I go home and I say, you know, we approach things in a very similar way. And I think some of that is when you have creatives who also kind of like the number side of things and the, <laughs> the strategic side of things and the more the businessy side of things. It's, it's, um, it's kind of fun to, to talk with those people and to um, work with those people and to realize um, you know, there are different ways to be creative and to support the arts. And mm -hmm. it's, it's really been a pleasure to work with Alice um, so far. And I'm looking forward to the next several months. I, I keep thinking, you know, when I, another thing, you know, that happens when I leave Reach and go home, you know, talk to friends or whatever, it's like, okay, you haven't scared her away yet, have you? <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like, I'm just, it's like, I'm, holding my breath. Okay, please. Please, <laughs> please stay. Please don't give up. You know, like, you learn like how we do this thing. You know, it's like, I hope Melissa will, will still be here the next time. Oh, I come in. And that makes me laugh because I have the same feelings where I'm like, okay, Alice hasn't given up on me yet. <laughs> I think, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty great match. And so that's, that feels good. It, I was just going to say, it really does sound like the perfect match because, in essence, Alice, you're you're handing over your your twenty something child and, and trusting Melissa to to carry this child through the next couple of decades, maybe. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you so much for the work you're doing together and the work you have done, Alice and and Melissa. You uh, you have a lot of really great foundation. It sounds like, and so wish you a whole lot of luck taking the ball and running with it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity to to chat with you. This was really lovely. Thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. This podcast has been a production of the Arts Council of Greater Lansing. To learn more about them, go to lansingarts.org.